Yeah, ESA 2015 again brought together a lot of scientists interested in social complexity and social simulation. Uh, originating from a variety of disciplines, we all came here together and discussed uh, progress in our work. And there were some developments that were very interesting. I think uh, one of them was that there's an increased attention for uh, formalizing behavioral theory in simulation models that are capable of interacting with, uh, for example, environmental models. So in that respect, uh, simulation becomes increasingly a tool facilitating uh, the interaction between the social and the natural sciences. And I think that's really an important progress because uh, many societal challenges deal indeed with the interaction of the two. So the more we can bring them together, the better it is. And I think we do some good business here as well. And the second thing uh, that was very interesting, that we had a discussion on the role of and importance of education. Um, we conclude that in our regular educational system, uh, there's much more attention for linear thinking. Whereas at this time, we have a need for a new generation that is being raised with an understanding of complexities of society. So we had a debate about at what age should you start and basically we discussed that eight years old, ten year old kids, they already understand that if I do something it has an impact on my friends and they behave back in return to me. So children already have an understanding of complexity and we should tap into that interest. Yeah, I'm uh, working together with uh, Rocco Paolillo, it's, uh, he's a uh, student from uh, Italy uh, visiting our university college in Groningen. And uh, we are working on a model that describes the processes that can emerge uh, if uh, refugees enter a country. And obviously this, this is a very hot topic. Uh, if you look at the Syrian conflict, you understand that it's, this is politically very hot. No. We of course deal with a kind of refugee crisis uh, in Europe. Uh, recently in Nature there was a publication stating that the refugee situation partially emerges from climate change and failing uh, harvests in Syria. So if you look at the systemic level, you have to uh, study what is actually happening and what, is, what are the possible consequences of uh, these uh, migration processes. Um, one of the key concerns is what will happen with all the refugees in Europe. Will they uh, separate themselves from the European culture? Will they merge or will it cause conflicts? Um, currently we see that uh, in the general debate you either have a party that says we have to help those people and we have to be very receptive and you have an other party that says no we have to close the borders and we have to keep everybody out. And to uh, help in getting a deeper understanding of the possible developments, we worked on a model describing these kinds of processes. And we find some results which uh, do not support completely both sides. So we're basically in between uh, considering the first results. What we observe is if you have the borders completely open uh, also for very conservative migrants, it may cause a polarization in uh, Europe. Whereas if you allow more liberal refugees to enter the European Union, you will have a situation where there's much more interaction and you keep a much more open society. So I hope this model will contribute, of course, to the discussion on this serious matter.